I'm in here in my garage building Tesla coils. And I just had a true spot where I understood something totally different. And I thought I'd throw it out there to you guys and see what you thought about it. And here's how it goes. We'll start with the Tesla coil. We're looking at it as a DC Tesla coil or basically a solid state Tesla coil. It's DC going in and it transfers that into a mimicked AC signal. It's got a square wave that goes up, square wave that goes down. It creates an oscillating circuit, which basically it's still DC. It just mimics an AC signal. It's important to note what it is. So we know that. We know that our gravity flyer is connected. Some of you say, well, it's connected to the top of the uh, Tesla coil itself on the number two coil. I've seen Alexi put the wire down the center. What's the difference? Well, the difference is when you connect it directly to the top, it creates a load and that load blows your MOS set and it drives you absolutely insane because you get like maybe a minute out of it, 90 seconds. If you're lucky, you can get two minutes at the max, but it continues to blow it because there's too much in it. So how do you get around that? Well, that's why he's putting the wire down the whole Tesla coil so he can avoid it doing that. The pushback isn't as hard at that level it's oscillating at to force that MOF set to explode so fast. It's a true understanding of how this thing works. I don't know if he got lucky or maybe he knew what it did. I'm just saying it's working that way in experiments. So let's move on to another part right now. First of all, let me say this real quick on that last part. What is he getting out of the Tesla coil? Maybe we should talk about that, huh? What is he getting? He's getting a field of energy pushed around this whole thing right here. Everything that's metal, all right here, except for this disc and this bottom disc. Those are the only two things that are not getting charged with that Tesla coil. It's important to note that. Now, what's controlling the voltage on those other two discs? You're basically putting a 5 back transformer in there. Again, the same exact type of signal. It's just a mimic DC signal that turns into a mimic AC signal. Same exact way. So, you're getting a positive charge on the top, negative charge on the bottom. What starts to happen when you have two motors working together? Well, what's going to happen here is they're going to look for a point that they can work at the same speed together. So as your top one's going, it's going to slow down a little bit with eddy current coming from the magnets on the bottom. What happens then? As this one slows down, it's not absorbing as much energy from that flyback. So what starts to happen? Your bottom just starts to get charged heavily with negative field, right? And then the rest of the positive here transfers down to the negative. What if what Alexi is trying to do here is basically take that Tesla coil and as he creates this field around the outside, a field to the center disc, he gets a point where your two motors are resonating together and then you get an energy transfer. What if that transfer puts it right through that center disc? Well, what happens to a Tesla coil? Well, a Tesla coil itself has no positive or negative field on it. It's a neutral field. So, as he's doing that, what happens? What if for a brief instant, this whole thing goes to negative? What if it all goes to a negative charge? What happens then? You basically get this thing that pulses for just a second in negative energy. What's the next step that he does? He's taking that piezoelectric disc and he's telling you, hey, I'm using it to create direction. It's at the top, it goes down. He's creating the direction right here so this pulls up. If the neutral state breaks gravity, then the negative state would repulse anything negative. If the ground is charged negative, which we know it is, he is creating a repulsion from this action. It stays right here inside the gravity flyer until it gets ready to pulse out. What happens when you put a bunch of that energy back into your Tesla coil? It basically clogs up your Tesla coil. It goes from an AC mimic sim si signal 
and it changes it to a DC current. What does that do? It creates a big magnetic clog in your Tesla coil. Again, a place where you blow MOF sets if they're connected directly to the coil. Now, what does that do? It builds up voltage. As it's building it up, it gets ready to shoot it off. This right here is where some people get an EM effect. It basically shoots it in quickly. Boom! Right in there. And it has an explosion of energy. And that's where we get at the understanding of this. He's listening for that sound of two motors being in sync. He knows when to pulse the top because he knows the energy transfer is happening. At the moment, I guarantee this, either he hears it, it's syncing up, and he can hear the He either hits that thing or right afterward. One way or the other, that's what he's doing. So that's my theory on this. He's actually taking this whole thing and creating a ball of energy that's negative. And everything in there works together. Again, I got to get you guys in the mindset of understanding one thing. It says AC. It's a mimicked AC signal created by DC. That's why it's working this way. A spark gap Tesla coil wouldn't do us any good in this. I thought forever that was the answer. But I'm learning when you do this with your high voltage coils, or your flyback I should say, so there's no confusion, that that's the way it's working. It's pulling energy and positive and negative out of it. So you really got to figure this stuff out when you're doing this because the tests are going to show you this stuff right here, which makes sense in this theory. But it also makes sense that you're just getting a true coil energy out of that Tesla coil. And the resonance is only coming in between the top and bottom disc. And at that point, he was able to transfer through that center plate and get everything to go negative then boom, big burst of energy. And what does that do when you get a magnetic form of negative energy? Boom, right against the earth and causes it to go up. That's why it goes up and stops because you can't do that forever. It won't stay in negative forever on the testicle. It's gonna go back to its neutral state. That's why I say, what if he's just breaking gravity by creating the neutral state? It's not positive, it's not negative, it's not going up, it's not going down. It creates a neutral state. Maybe that part is the anti-gravity part. The part where he puts it all in negative is probably your lift factor, which comes in and pulses from that top point right here. It comes down through that piezoelectric disc and creates a direction. That's your lift. Important to note, there are two different things in there. One's lift, one breaks gravity. Now, it's interesting to note this at certain times of the day. When I deal with my flyback coils and I'm trying to make some kind of energy device, I always notice when the day's different later in the afternoon, they act different than they do in the morning. What is that going on? There's less energy in the air when it's nighttime. There's more energy in the air when it's daytime. That could be having that simple effect on those Tesla, on that whole, excuse me, the whole gravity flyer when it's doing this. It takes more time to build a field when it's actually not sunny out or when it's cold out or anything else where when it is sunny and it is hot, you have more energy excited in the air and that may make it easier to grow a big field inside the bubble. As you've seen in my other videos, you have a bubble here on top over that uh, top disc right there. It probably looks more like that. On the bottom disc, you have the same thing. And then you have a field outside of it. Negative inside, positive outside, or neutral on the outside, and negative and positive on the inside, or positive here, negative here. You get what I'm trying to say? It's actually looking like he's creating a gravity well with it and then exploding it out. Anyway, that's what I got here. I listened to all the comments and what you guys said, and then I changed my theory based on everything I said, everything that's going on the test, and everything around it. I hope you guys understood this. I'll try to do it again maybe some other time and try to make it clearer. But that's really what I think is going on here. That's what everything indicates that's going on in the different fields 
and the things I've experienced through every test that I've ever done, it keeps showing me the same path here, and it's about time that I finally put it together. Anyway, hope you guys understood it. Hope I didn't come off and say something weird that you totally misunderstood. But anyway, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.